science fiction addicts used to be almost as anorakish as train spotters. Then along came the X-Files and a massively popular cult. The series has built a huge worldwide following. The videos have topped the rental charts and it's successfully switched from BBC Two to One. In a minute, we'll be meeting two of its stars, Mitch Pilaggi and Nicholas Lee, better known as Agents Skinner and Krychek. But first, a glimpse into the alien world of the X-Files. According to the reports I reviewed, Agent Scully's research states that Dwayne Berry's propensity for violent, deviant behavior is due to brain damage from a bullet wound in the head. Is this the operational opinion? Yes, sir. <clears throat> is there another? He's convinced he's going to be abducted by aliens. That by taking someone to the abduction site, he won't be abducted himself. That he's following orders from alien voices in his head. Yes. Well, that's an interesting spin on the Nuremberg defense. We have to begin with an apology. We just demoted <laughs> Skinner. <laughs> Sorry about that. You are, in fact, assistant director. You got it. Uh, right. Very important to get these titles correct. What, what do we actually call you, then? Agent. 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 Oh, that's yeah. good. It's, not, it's not so much that I care, but Skinner's a little bit sensitive about it. I can it. imagine, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would be. Hello, both of you. Nice yes, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Um, to be here. Before we talk about... That the, as we said, hugely popular series. What's this video about, the one that you're, you're, you're here to talk about? Is it it's somebody, we gather from that clip, who um, thinks they've been abducted by aliens? Mm -hmm. it's a, we've all met one, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> really? yeah. um, on. What they've done um, is they've taken three of the episodes and compiled them into more or less a three-hour film, and it really is it really centers around this fellow who thinks he's been abducted and then in the second part of the, of the three he uh, abducts Skelly and then in the third part of the three Skelly herself gets abducted so, right. or, so we, or so we think. And true to form you're there to screw it all up as far as you possibly true can. True to form, yeah, that's yeah. right. Exactly. Which shadowy department are you, are you supposed to be representing there? I mean you're obviously working to a brief. I mean you know throughout the series there you are you know yeah. you're trying to cock it up for everybody. Um, it's a, uh, a sort of a very covert side dark you know black covert ops. side uh, black operation side of of the mm. uh, of the FBI but why do they want to screw up your your your, your job i don't i, I don't haven't quite grasped that um just to continue no, the storyline <laughs> <I>, you know <laughs> honest, honest. no is it meant to be the, like that professional rivalry like they say in this country there is between mo5 and I, MI6 I think it just it's you know it, it brings a, you know the conflict into it, which you need you know in drama uh, yeah. and it's it's uh, the characters that they that they develop on the show uh, uh, check the cigarette smoking man are such such wonderfully fleshed out characters mm. and yeah. it's so interesting uh, that uh, Fleshed out. I, I guess that was the last segment with the. Uh, <laughs> is, no, the sorry. Is, the, um, <laughs> is it as is it as popular in the states as it is here? It's it, yeah. It's really it's gone from cult status uh, to mainstream. Our, our ratings are, are soaring. Uh, mm -hmm. Now we're moving to Sunday nights, which will uh, I think bring an audience that that you know, that hasn't been able to watch us in the past uh, mm -hmm. yeah. because you know they, if they go out on set, uh, Friday nights or whatever, but now they will. I think, I think a lot more people will be watching the uh, show. Well, scheduling is everything, isn't it? Mm. It's important. <laughs> it kind of counts a little bit. It's yeah. interesting, you, you were saying that uh, I... Uh, trouble is, when you interview people like you, we always expect you to be exactly as you are in the drama. It's stupid, you know, but that, that's the first time you meet someone, you expect it. But actually, doesn't your mother say that, that you remind her of, of your father? Yeah, you very much so. It's something that I, that, that I didn't intentionally do with the character. It was something that, uh, having been around my father so much uh, in his working environment when I was a child, uh, I, I got to see how he uh, conducted himself what with was, his what, employees. What did he do? What was his job? He worked on a, uh, it was a defense contractor with, with you know, through the, through the government on uh, uh, foreign contracts right. in mm. Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Iran, and eventually I started doing the same type of work myself. But, mm. uh, so it was a very somewhat, well, I, it was somewhat similar position, mm. and, um, and so just having been around him so much when I was a child kind of seeped in Suit, to tie, the character. Cuffs. Exactly, he wore glasses, Authority. he was bald, he was a little yeah. smaller than I am, but... Uh, yeah. I, th I think on the, um, on the series that we're seeing over here, your two characters have Walking just been back. introduced. Because um, we're we're a bit behind, I yeah. think. Yeah. So I mean, well, what, how how do you? Well, did you know it was terribly popular when you went to audition for it? No, I you know I think um, what happened originally is I'm um, speaking for myself. I went in to read for the role and knew that it was a good show. You could tell. You can usually tell immediately from the writing. You can usually tell by the, in the first half page whether it's going to be any good or not. And and you know you knew it was it was going to be a good show, but you can never tell what's going to be successful or not because some of the worst are successful and some of the yeah. mm. the best aren't. So it's really hard to tell. Do you think that the I mean everyone's got a, a take on why why it's been such a hit? You know, and it's not just about scheduling and it's not just about rounded characters and good writing either. It is to do with the, the central concept of it all and is it because we actually all 
deep down want to believe that these things exist, you know, whether it's I an alien that, I think that's an aspect of it. I think, yeah. it's, I think it's, it's just in, in human nature that we have this, this uh, curiosity about, about the paranormal, about, you know, mm -hmm. uh, about aliens. Uh, and I think deep down we all like to be scared, you know. I mean, yeah. it's, it's why people like to go to amusement yeah. know, parks and, and, you know, take the roller coaster, just that adrenaline I also, rush. I also think yeah. it's, it's deeply depressing to think that there isn't anything else. But us here, mm -hmm. oh, right I think here it would and be now. arrogant for us to think that we're the only people, they're the only only uh, beings existing in the universe. It's just mm. you know. I was reading um, a, an article. Sixteen sightings of the Loch Ness monster on Saturday. Sixteen. <laughs> Sixteen in one go. During, during, I don't actually believe in the Loch Ness monster, but I keep an open mind. And every well, why time. Why weren't I... they all together? And then then people would believe them. What do you mean all together? Were they corroborated by other? Yeah, people? yeah, yeah. There were sixteen different sightings all around the Loch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's cool. That's... You were one of them. It's a good show. <laughs> <laughs> one day. One day. I had my anorak ready <laughs> for the trip to Loch Ness. Yes, you did. Um, yeah, no, I think I, I, I was reading an interview with uh, Buzz Aldrin, the, the, the second man on the moon, right, right. the other day. Um, and it, it's really kind of, in some ways, although he seems a bit more together now, it did wreck his life for a long time. A long time. And I, I do think that there is that, you know, that, that feeling that there's got to be something out there, otherwise one just gets horribly depressed. Mm. Don't you think? I think they agree. Yeah, right. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's what your program yeah. is dedicated to what, prove. Exactly. What, right. what amused me and slightly worried me, I don't know if it did you, was you were at an airport, I think it was LA or wherever, um, and an FBI agent came up to you and flashed the badge, right? In, yeah, in Vancouver. Well, in actually, Vancouver. he came up and approached me, and I, I didn't know who he was, or, you know, he just, I thought he maybe was just a fan or something, and he, he goes, FBI, and I go, excuse me, and he goes, FBI, and I said, <laughs> I'm sorry, and he goes, he goes, you play Skinner on the show, right? And I said, yeah, and he goes, I'm an FBI agent. And, uh... So he took me back into his office and showed me all the uh, goings on back there, but it was it was really quite interesting. But he didn't he tell you that that I mean basically everybody he knew who was in the FBI were were huge fans and they followed it and they we, all kind of wanted to do what you did. We've gotten that from an, from a number. I, I, I met a couple of uh, other FBI agents at a convention who who came. We were signing away, you know, and and these two people came up in suits and this man and this woman and and uh, they flashed these badges and I kind of looked up and said. Well, this is really cool. Where'd you get them? Because <laughs> they look Same so place good. They got guy. this. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And he goes, well, we're FBI agents. And, and they, they uh, indicated that there are a lot of fans within the FBI. Which is, so. which is great for you guys. But isn't it a bit worrying that the Federal Bureau of Investigation want to kind of trap aliens? <laughs> or indeed believe in them? <laughs> Well, I think we've got a lot of things to worry about in that <laughs> department, so... Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, like the militias and stuff so, like that. How, so how far ahead are you in the States? I mean, how many series are, are there in now? We go, uh, start filming the fourth um, season in July, middle right. of July, and so uh, we just finished the third, I suppose, what? At the uh, well, beginning of May we finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. beginning of May. Right. Yeah. We shoot ten months. Um, this, this year we shot only nine and a half because David's doing a movie, and Jillian right. is on tour in the Far East and Australia, yeah. so... Well, really, congratulations on it. And, and, and you must be really pleased with, with your part, because it, it's, it's an unexpected part, actually. I mean, that, that's what I was trying to get the handle on it, as to why you're behaving the way you are. But it is good, because it gives you so much to play with, isn't it, to be well, the baddie? Yeah, it's interesting, because when I first started, they, they said it was going to be a three-episode arc that I was going to be doing, and I was right. really excited about it, and tend to get really emotional when I get big jobs. And, and, and then uh, it happened that they changed it, and there was a big confrontational scene at the end that was taken out, and I thought, well, he's just vaporized, he just disappears. And, mm. and that was, you know, in the second year, and now I've been back and back and back and yeah. back, and I keep on coming back. But, you know, it's wonderful to play this, this type of guy, because yeah. it's, it's really dark, and, and I like dark stuff, and, and, mm. and it's all the things you don't get to do in real life, you know? Just one problem from our point of view, because our kids, our 10-year-old son, always wants to watch it, mm. but it's our older time. boys, who are 19, say they shouldn't, because it's not always, I mean, it well, is adults, you, What did it? you think about that one? I caught him, he taped it, he taped it surreptitiously, and I caught him watching it, and I haven't actually seen it, to be fair, but I did pull it out of the thing, and said, no, I don't think you should see this. It was the one where the, where the guy comes out of the walls every 30 years and rapes a woman Tombs. and then goes back. Tombs, that, yeah. That's right. That, Squeeze that, and that was a bit heavy for a 10-year-old. Well, you agree? I tell you, there are, there is, uh, people have indicated they, that they watch the, the show with their, with their children, very young children, and it's yeah. like, it surprises me on occasion, yeah, because some of the, some of the, I mean, it's it's very well done, but there's some stuff in it that so you know, kind of like you scares said, me. Can I tell our Jack that you said? It's I'm not telling. I'm not telling anybody not to watch the show. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got Chris. we've got two avid viewers in our family of it already. Yeah, but I I I do think I it's know. not it's not for kids. It's not meant for kids. Although no, the content really, would no. attract teenagers and them. No. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, there's there are certain shows that I think they're that are great, but there's some stuff that's. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. yeah. A little dicey. I think parents should tape it, watch it, and then make a, a judgment week.
This is BBC Two, putting the X into extra.